Howdy everybody, Keith Warren here, and welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories into the beautiful Ozark, smack dab in the middle of Missouri. On today's program, we'll introduce you to a deer farmer's deer farmer. That's right, he is like the cat daddy when it comes to deer farming. And we'll have him share his story of why he got started in this wonderful business. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Like many of us, uh, Kevin grew up in the outdoors. He is a little boy. He grew up hunting and fishing and connecting with nature. And it was this uh, connection that he had at an early age that wound up helped driving him to be able to, to um, pursue a career as a deer farmer. And so he did that uh, two and a half decades ago. He became a deer farmer. And today he is, uh, Kevin's a really smart guy, but he's not gonna be out there talking, blabbing a bunch. He only answers the questions that you ask him, but if you ask him a question, he can answer the question. And so uh, anybody that knows Kevin, knows Kevin is a really smart man that's got all this information in him. And that's the reason why I say he's a deer farmer's deer farmer. My name is Kevin Grace. I'm the owner of Whitetail Sales Deer Farm in Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, I've been a deer farmer for over 25 years now and have well over 4,000 head of deer. Uh, it was an accident to become a deer farmer. I was in the timber industry. I've always been in the outdoors, but I happened to go on an auction where they were selling deer and they were starting to go pretty cheap really well over 25 years ago. And I asked the guy I was with, if I buy a buck farm, can I keep it at your place? I get my own fencing built. And so that started Kevin Grace in the deer industry. I've been coming out to Kevin's for, I guess, the better part of 10 years, and it's always like in August when I come. And every single time that I come, he's got people out here. I mean, he's got people out here that are looking at deer. He's got people that are out here uh, asking for his help. He'll put on clinics to help people. He's really a mentor to people that want to get started in the deer farming business, and people that are already in the deer farming business that need help, they call Kevin Grace. Uh, I've known Keith for a very, very long time. I was excited when he started the Deer and Wildlife Stories and I've been a participant for nearly every one of them. I was excited to have him come back again today and, and nearly every time he's here, I've got customers that want to come and get involved in the deer farming and they hear Keith Warren is here and of course they want to keep coming and meet Keith Warren. Let's just say you're watching this show and you're from Alabama or New York or Wisconsin, Minnesota, any of the states that allow deer farming and you think, uh, how's Kevin Grace going to be able to help you? Man, let me tell you something. Kevin knows people everywhere. He's got connections with deer farms literally in every single state and every single Canadian province that allows deer farming. And so if you're watching this show and you're interested in getting involved in deer farming in your particular state, uh, Kevin can help you because he has the contacts in your state that he can point you right to and get you started right. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UBC Power Sports, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Advanced Deer Genetics, New Dart, Divine Genetics, the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetail's Big Buck Draft and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this is off our Facebook page from a viewer by the name of Nicholas. It says, I'm a senior in high school and have watched every one of your shows online and want to be a professional deer farmer. What would your advice be? 
Nicholas, thanks for watching online and for being uh, following us on Facebook. Uh, anybody who wants to be a professional deer farmer, my advice would be start working on a deer farm right now. If you're going to be a senior in high school or you're a senior in high school this coming summer, you're going to need a job. Go to our website, look around, find a local deer farm by you. Call them up, go over there. Deer farmers are always looking for interns, good summer help when the fawns are hitting the ground. And that's the best advice I can give anybody who wants to become a professional deer farmer, go work on a deer farm. If y'all have a question for me, all you need to do is log on to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab or shoot me a question on Facebook. You know, if you're gonna start a business like a, a hardware business, uh, or an auto parts business or a paint and body shop or whatever, I guess you'd want to talk to somebody that's in that line of work that you trust, that you know has been in it for a long time. And, and yeah, they can tell you the good things, but they can also tell you the bad things. And they can actually kind of point you in the direction to go and the point you in the direction not to go. Well, that's the same thing with Kevin Grace. When people want to get started in the deer breeding business, when they really want to become a deer breeder slash deer farmer, they don't want to make mistakes. You need to deal with somebody that can point you in the right direction and point you in the direction and say, don't go there. And that's what Kevin does. All right, so we got uh, a pretty deer there. White tag. That white tag is pretty. He is gorgeous. Yeah. What are you going to do with him? Probably going to breed him. I mean, that's going to be another one of the breeders. I mean, I like that look. He got a little more extras than I want to see on that one, but he's still got some really tall tines. You know, I think that uh, deer farmers, unfortunately, wind up getting a, a bad rap by a lot of people. And it's unfortunate when we wind up, we talk about deer farming amongst hunters, the, a lot of hunters, ah, it's an immediate turnoff. And I think, what a shame. And the reason why is because, I mean, deer farmers, it's like we love these deer like you can't even imagine. We spend every single day with them. Absolutely. You, if, if I were a hunter looking at a deer farmer, I'd say, hey, teach me what you know. I want to know about antler memory. I want to know about breeding. I want to know about gestation on these deer. I want to know more. And if you're a hunter, wouldn't you want to know more? There's not a better place in the world to learn all this information from than a deer farmer. And like you said, we are the outdoors. We are the outdoors. We've talked about that a couple times today. Hunting them was not enough. Keith, and I know that's why you're in the business. Hunting is not enough, and we are the true managers of the animals that God has given us. We are the stewards of the land. You know, we are the people that are passionate. We're the ones that's managing the property. You know, you hit the nail on the head. I'm, I'm, I want to point something out. We choose to raise white-tailed deer, and we and we sit here. We do this with passion. We do this. Uh, it's a business. It's certainly a serious business. But we do this knowing that you know what what we're doing. These animals increase property value for people. When you buy a piece of property and you put up a fence on it, would you want to feed a, a small animal or would you want to feed a big animal? More than likely, you'd want to feed a big animal. Well, where are you going to go get one? You just don't go to a deer store. You go to a deer farmer and he'll sell you these animals. They'll talk about pedigrees. You can see all these bucks in here. This is phenomenal. And the, and the passion that goes on to, to drive a deer farmer is something that deer farming is not just a, you know, it's, it's not a job. It's a lifestyle. That's Wouldn't right. you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. We are very passionate about those animals. We're the ones that leave extra beans in the field. We're the ones that plant food plots for a lot of these animals. I'm the one that manages my deer ponds. Conservation don't come do that, I do that. And I do that for the love and the desire for my friends and my family and myself to have the best hunting or the best fishing that's possible. This is why we raise deer. It's not, it's not just because of that, it's because we are consumed with deer. I tell people that are, uh, that are not deer farmers, I, I tell them that deer farmers I know, whether it's guys or gals, we have a, a love affair with nature, mm -hmm. a love affair with the white-tailed deer. And the white-tailed deer has son, done so many phenomenal things to bring people together. We wouldn't be friends. We wouldn't even know each other if it wasn't for the white-tailed deer. Yeah. The white-tailed deer does magical things for people. And I think that if you come to a deer farm that you would really see this. And, and I'm thinking, okay, if, if you're interested in coming to a deer farm, and you're trying to convince your family like, hey, deer farming may be something that we want to do, oh, that we God, can take yeah. a four or five acre piece of property and we can raise deer. I'm going to give you a little piece of advice and we're going to go right now and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, take them when they're bottle feeding babies. Because when they're bottle feeding babies and you get to participate, you get to see there, you get to see what's going on, it's hard not to fall in love with what's going on on a deer farm. So we're going to head over there right now because I want to see your babies. So. I want to point out something when you bring that up. I've taught this to my managers and, and my secretary and everything. 
If somebody calls and wants to do a farm tour, find out if they've got wife or children. If they do, you tell them they gotta bring that wife and children because at the end of the day, who can make a decision without their wife and a child? And in most cases, the wife and the children are, I don't wanna do the deer farming until they get here, Keith. And now all of a sudden, that gentleman wants to become a deer farmer? He got the, he got the password to go now, you know? Yeah. Sold, that's yeah. the way it is. <laughs> yeah, they put that bottle in front of a little doe farmer out there petting an adult doe, and I mean, now the farming became part of it. The family is part of it, and that's what it's all about. That's why you deer farm. Well, there's no doubt about it, the love that a deer farmer provides for these deer, it, uh, it doesn't start when they got antlers like this. It starts when they're little bitty babies, and we'll take you in the bottle raising facility and we'll show you some little bitty babies in just a second but right now I want to go see that great big yearling yeah let's go see that great big yearling he's yeah. nice yeah he's, he's better than nice let's go closed captioning for deer and wildlife stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch where quality is our commitment Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Hey y'all, it's Timmy Edwin. I'm president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club, and I just discovered something great. The Acme Can't Miss Bullet. This thing is accurate up to one mile away. One mile away, you just can't miss. You may not be able to hit the broad side of a barn, but you can knock a door off a dollhouse with one of these from one mile away. Hold on a minute, Timmy. Yes, sir? Every hunter wants to be able to shoot perfectly. Yeah. In years past, everybody's wanted to spend a lot of time at the range to hone their skills, but now you're saying they don't have to? Not with this bullet. Okay, answer your question. Is hunting with that bullet, is it fair chase? I don't know, Keith. What is fair chase? I don't know, but I'd think that the president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club sure would know. You'd think so, but I guess I didn't think about it. Yeah, well, until you figure it out, do yourself a favor. Just shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt. Yeah. Shut up and hunt. I like that. Yeah. I want to take you a smart bullet. Shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt. I like that. That's good. Shut up and hunt. That's a smart choice. Folks, if you have the definition of fair chase hunting, I'd like to hear from you. Until then, use the hashtag just shut up and hunt on all your social media posts. What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag just shut up and hunt. So we just wound up showing you a bunch of real pretty deer and we're heading over to take a look at this big old yearling and all of a sudden we run into some people that are out here actually looking to buy deer. And uh, we're sitting there talking to them and said, hey, I got an idea. I'm gonna let these people tell you why they deal with Kevin Grace. When you, when you got into the deer farming, okay, you haven't been a deer farmer long, okay, what was the big thing that caused you to buy from Kevin Grace? Probably the biggest thing was him telling me that, uh, you know, service after the sale. And that's something that Kevin always uh, promoted up front was service after the sale. And um, I will tell you that's been a help for me because um, Brian can attest to this. I've probably uh, rung his phone a lot because, you know, you're new to it and you just don't know what to expect. And, uh, and I've had a lot of long conversations with Kevin on the phone too. And, um, so that was one of my biggest reasons for buying from Kevin. I was just curious because I think that's a big thing. If you're going to buy deer from somebody, you're going to need to buy deer from somebody that's going to stand behind the deer and help you. And if you buy deer and all of a sudden they just say, see you, take your money and say, see you. Could you imagine how helpless you would feel? Oh, I can imagine that. I mean, it'd be awful. So you really want to deal with somebody like Kevin that's going to stand behind them. And if you got a problem and you're going to have questions guaranteed, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I've I've, uh, I've called Bryant before with uh, things that I thought was a concern, and he's like, no, that's just normal behavior for the deer. And, um, so it's, it is important to have somebody that you can call, and we'll take the time to, to probably listen to your concerns that may not really be a concern, so to speak. Just to settle you down. I tell guys that are, uh, and gals that are getting into deer farming, when you're a new deer farmer, there are no stupid questions. Uh, the thing about it is you may be concerned about something that really isn't an issue at all. And so it's for that reason, you got to be able to have a lifeline to somebody to be able to help you out, to ask those questions that you may feel they're, that they're a real urgent situation, but it turns out after you call that person, 
They say, it's no big deal. What you're looking at is normal. Kevin is that lifeline. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to deerandwildlifestories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. So let me tell you about the market right here in uh, Missouri. The market's pretty doggone good. Uh, the country's beautiful. I mean, you take a look at it, especially around the Lake of the Ozarks, this is some kind of pretty. But the land prices are, are very affordable in comparison to other places. And the taxes over in Missouri are low too. And let me tell you something, if you come here and you want to get a deer farm started, there is no better contact than Kevin Grace because he's got the best genetics in the market. Many years ago, everybody was chasing to grow the first 300 inch deer. And, and I feel there were some mistakes made because a lot of people bred with a deer because they had a lot of tines. He might've been narrow, he might've been short beamed, but he was big and the industry was chasing it. Times have definitely changed. I've always been true blue to typical deer, still am and will always be because I like that look. But today, the industry has started resorting back to the beautiful 200 inch, 220 inch frame deer. And that's always been where I've wanted to be. All right, so uh, what you're gonna see now is a really, really exceptional yearling buck. And uh, Kevin, tell me about him. Um, he's gorgeous. Uh, he's got muley forks, big long tines, incredible beams for a yearling, shock appeal. He really does. You know, uh, as, uh, as he's walking up there, I mean, I'm looking at him thinking, I mean, he looks good. He's got really nice beams. I'm betting 23, 24 inch beams. I, I think he's got 24. Yeah, and he's tall. I mean, that's a good deer now. And he's head and shoulders above most other ones in here. Yeah. But then what is your strategy when it comes to trying to predict what he's gonna grow into compared to everybody else? Well, he's got that muley fork split, which I like that. Um, he's got a few extras, few, very few. But I've noticed that as they get two-year-old and three-year-old, that stuff just multiplies, multiplies, multiplies. So I'm probably not gonna use them this year to breed. I'm gonna let him go out another year and probably wait a year. Actually, we had some customers that's looking at buying him, so we might do something like that. But I'm gonna wait another year before I do breed him because I think that he's gonna probably have, I'll bet you he's got 270 inches at two with probably a 220 frame. Yeah, he's gonna be a big that deer. 50 inches extra is more than I really want. Okay, so when it comes to, to selling deer, is everything on the farm for sale? You know, I always say it is, but in reality, I've got some pets that I just really, I like them. I like to be able to go out there and get a hug from them, so. The answer probably is no. Probably no. <laughs> probably no, no, but I tell everybody everything's for sale. It is probably not. You know, I've just got some, just some girls out there that we just, everybody here likes them. We always can go out there and get love. They always are ready for treats and always ready to give that same love back. And, and the reason why they're, these deer are so loving is because there's so much love given to them. Like I said, they're ready to give it back. And so uh, we'll show you the reason why they're ready to give it back. How come the bond between the deer farmer and the deer is so strong? Let's go take a look at the bottle facility. And I'm gonna show y'all what's going on in there. And, uh, it's place to fall in love with the deer, that's for sure. Yep, the bottle feeding makes it, let's go. <laughs> Spending time with deer is about the coolest thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, look at that guys, it's got bottles and they're all full. And these, I, I tell people that deer on a deer farm are the luckiest deer in the world. I mean, think about that. I mean, oh, yeah. these, these deer could have been born on the outside and eh, they'd have to contend with predators and cars, and all kinds of problems. And here they got lots of love. Yes, you do, but lots oh, yeah, of love. Yeah, lots of love. Yep. And full bellies, like right now. Yep, they ate all the leaves. Looked like a bunch of cutter ants went to that limb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. It's never ceased to amaze me how deer eat sticks, though. The deer in the pens, you just See, they're eating sticks and, yeah, good stuff. All right, so would you sell a fawn? Sure, I'd sell a fawn. Well, if I could take a fawn back to Texas with me, I'd be taking one for sure. Unfortunately, the borders are closed. Oh, look. Come here, come here. See, I'm not gonna leave my daddy. 
You know, I do these shows with Keith Warren for one thing, to try to find more people that want to do what I'm doing. If you want to know more about farming of white-tailed deer or any type of deer species, give me a call. 573-230-3746. That's my personal number. You're going to catch me. And we're going to talk deer farming. And we're going to see how we can build a plan for you guys. I really don't know how many years I've been coming over here to Kevin's place, but every time I come, I, I learn more. And I think that's the cool thing about hanging around with what I call a deer farmer's deer farmer. I mean, Kevin's the kind of guy that I'm amazed that somebody that's got as much passion and commitment to deer as he has. And it's cool just to hang around him and get to hang around the deer. And then uh, the one thing that I found out on, on uh, this particular trip, I mean, Kevin's got uh, over 4,000, almost 5,000 animals around the country. So if there's anybody that can help you in any state, literally, he's been so connected for so many years. And uh, for two and a half decades, he's been connected. Uh, in states all over. So from Pennsylvania to Texas and every place in between, I'd recommend getting a hold of Kevin because uh, if he doesn't know somebody in that market, he's only one person away from knowing somebody in that market, I guarantee you. Hey, bud, leave that camera alone.